All right. Good afternoon, and welcome back from the break. Uh, we didn't we didn't have a New Year's Eve uh, ball drop countdown, but we have hit zero, and uh, the music was uh, the intro into our afternoon session here. Um, this is our uh, government relations live update. Um, what we've been doing with these is we've we've had actually four different speakers on these, um, and it's live, so you can ask questions in the chat, or in, I encourage you to do it in the Q and A. It's just easier to find them. Uh, we do have several topics, though, that we're going to talk about today. Um, my name is Greg Saul. I'm our Vice President of Government Relations. Um, today's speaker is uh, Matt Dodovich from the Ohio Department of Taxation. Uh, Matt's uh, current title is a Tax Program Executive um, over Income Tax, Past Serenity Tax, and Employer Withholding Taxes. Um, when I first met Matt, probably it was probably 10 plus years ago, um, I believe he was the division counsel over the past serenity, and then he moved over to the appeals division for a while. Um, and that that's kind of the end of my intro that I know, Matt, if, Matt, if you want to fill any of the gaps for me, but I know, I know you're very experienced at the Ohio Department of Taxation. Um, and how many, how many years do, do, you, do you have in there? So, yeah, thank you, Greg. And, and thanks for having me here today. Yeah, I have, uh, I've been with the department for a little over 12 years now. Um, been working in income, past serenity, an employer withholding tax pretty much the whole time. Uh, definitely dabbled in some of the other taxes. I was division counsel for a bunch of the excise taxes and then was in our um, appeals management unit. So handled cases before the BTA, the Board of Tax Appeals and the Supreme Court. And so did did all the taxes there. But, uh, you know, income and pass through any employer withholding are kind of where my heart lies. And so I'm, I'm really happy uh, to be in this role. Um, don't know how many of you guys know Ron Podorf. He had the role. He was a 46-year employee, retired recently, and uh, definitely have big shoes to fill, but uh, excited to be here, excited to talk about what's going on. Yeah, thanks, Matt, and looking forward to our conversation. Uh, we got we got about 15 to 20 minutes, so um, I know it's going to be action-packed. So <laughs> one, one, of the first, one of the first questions I had I uh, wanted to discuss was, you know, we just, filed, you know, unless, you know, taxpayers on extension, we just finished uh, the uh, 2024 tax filing season. Um, did you want to give like kind of an update on, uh, you know, how, how that uh, finished up? You, you know, I, I, I do see, you know, the, the revenue numbers, Ohio's fiscal years are, are July 1st to June 30th. So we still have about two more months left of fiscal year 2024 before uh, we hit 2025. Um, you know, the revenue numbers um, have been down a, a little bit, you know, the last couple months, um, kind of what you're, what you're seeing on the personal income tax side. Yeah, so I mean, you know, to date, uh, it was uh, definitely an interesting filing season for us this year for income and school district income tax. Um, you know, we unveiled a new internal and external system, OH tax, and um, it definitely, um, anytime you have something new, it's going to have some opportunities for gains and efficiencies, but also some learning opportunities as well. Um, certainly excited to have people registered now and familiar with it and get one filing season under our belt. Uh, you know, recent survey we had um, said that 70% of users who who responded to the survey said that they would recommend the platform to a friend. Uh, that said, we're constantly making improvements to the experience um, and hoping that it gets better. You know, to date, we've we've received six million um, income and school district income tax returns, so that's pretty par for the course for us. Certainly, the school district numbers a little lower than it's been in years past. We attribute that to our new um, uh, consolidated or our new school district return, where you can file multiple districts on one. Uh, but you know, for the most part, we're right where we would expect to be. Um, you know, in terms of the revenue piece, all I can say is we review these returns on the front end. You know, as things come in, you know, we're sending out letters and asking people for additional information. And, um, you know, we don't we don't just let money go out the door willy nilly. So, you know, if, if we're sending out refunds, it's definitely because the citizenry is entitled to it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to we're happy to send that out. Um, you know, the last thing I'll bring up is just, uh, you know, this filing season, in addition to having the new OH tax platform, uh, we also did a lot more outreach than we have in the past. You know, we visited libraries, trade shows. Um, we did six interactive webinars. Um, we had our, our welcome center open on Saturday uh, before filing season, and we did extended hours in the evening and, and wanted to thank you for helping promote those for us. But, uh, you know, we're, we're here to help. We're here to do what we can with people. Uh, we're here to get the information out. And, um, you know, we hope that we did a good job with it that this year. 
Yeah, thanks, Matt. And then, I mean, so the school district, uh, the SD 100, I'll be in on one uh, form, I think was was welcomed uh, this year. Um, is, is there anything uh, that, you know, kind of peeked behind the curtain going into the next tax filing season? I, I, I recently did read um, because this year on the, on the new system that you just mentioned, it was limited to income tax and school district income tax. And I, I saw that the department is going to try to get uh, more taxes onto that next tax filing season. Um, is there any other updates, kind of what you guys are looking at for, for next year? Sure. So I'll answer the second part of your question first and then jump back to the first part. So we are um, continuously trying to add more taxes to the new system. The, the ultimate goal would be for all of them to kind of be in one, one stop, you know, one spot, one stop shop. Uh, the big taxes that we're looking to add in the next release or release two, as we're calling it, is um, the employer withholding tax, um, the sales tax, and the use tax, and then a, a myriad of, of excise taxes, not not all of them, but uh, just a few to try to you know uh, dip in. And then after that, we'll start adding other taxes. Basically, each year we'll be looking to add more and more taxes until they're they're all on the platform. Um, you asked about the school district return. As I said earlier, yes, this year we did unveil a new uh, combined school district return. In years past, um, taxpayers and tax reps would have to file multiple school district returns if somebody lived in one, two. Sometimes we'd see upwards, honestly, of six or seven districts in a year. I, I, I don't move that much, but some people apparently do. Um, and so we, we heard from the practicing community and we heard from taxpayers, like there's gotta be a better way. You know, we were having people file refund claims on some returns and pay tax on the other. So last year we really went back to the drawing board and said, how could we do this all in, in one return? And, uh, anecdotally, uh, people have been very happy with it. Um, you know, they definitely like the ease of filing one return. They definitely like it just being all in one spot. We handle all the distributions on the back end, so we know where the money needs to go based on what you report, and we send it to the school districts that it belongs to. Um, that said, it's the first year that we had it, so there's always going to be room for improvement. We've received feedback from taxpayers and practitioners saying this could be more clear, or maybe you could enhance these lines, or the instructions could be better. So we're we're already back at the drawing board trying to figure out how to make changes to make it better. Nothing, nothing major, not a huge overhaul by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it's going to be basically the same form that you guys have seen this year. Just, just a little, just enhanced, just, just taking those opportunities for education and development and, and implementing them. Uh, one thing that we had people ask us about was it was really hard for some people to calculate the residency dates. Uh, you know, my understanding is a lot of people, the software did it for them, but there were just some people who did file by paper or who just um, their software didn't do the calculations. So we are working on a tool that's going to be on our website that's going to allow you to put in like two dates and it's going to give you how many days you lived in the district, which is going to help people when it comes to allocating their income um, in those situations. So again, always looking for room to improve would absolutely encourage people if they have ideas on things we could be doing better to, to let us know. Okay. Thanks, Matt. And yeah, I, I see there's a question in the Q&A. It's something we'll try to address at the end. It, it actually might be more of a question that uh, that you might want me to answer, uh, but if you want to opine on that. But um, the next topic I wanted to bring up, though, um, kind of, you know, on our talk points here is the the um, questions that I got a lot this tax season um, with the refund offset letters. I mean, this wasn't new to this tax season, but there was, I think, more of them that went out because the systems were communicating uh, more frequently and often with each other. And so, Matt, can you kind of kind of give us, yeah. uh, you know, kind of um, a, a summary of that pro that process? Sure. Th and I appreciate that, Greg. You know, I, I absolutely um, we we uh, we got a lot of questions about the offset notices this year. Um, uh, as you point out, it's not anything new. We've been doing offsets for I mean, I've been here for 12 years and we've been doing them longer than that. Um, I think that there's just a few things that are important to know. And, and I and I think before I start, I think you're right. Um, I think that um, one of the main reasons that maybe you were seeing more of them or you saw them for the first time is that the new system uh, and just new computers in general, like they communicated better, you know. And, and so just the way the offset process works, just so everybody knows, is um, the Department of Taxation gets a list from various state agencies that says, hey, the following people with the following social security number owe a debt to our state agency. And based on 
that list, we match it up against what we have in our system. And if the person's owed a refund, we send that refund to that state agency that holds the debt. And we send a letter to the taxpayer saying, basically, you're expecting a refund. Um, you're not going to be getting that because we sent it to this agency for this debt. We're not told what the debt's for, how old the debt is. You know, a lot of that information does not come to us. We're just, here's the debt and here's what we're what we're doing. It's a very, um, we're the middleman in a sense in this scenario. And so, um, you know, we, we're aware that, that uh, this year, because of some of the automation of the program, that these were going out and the fact that computers work faster than, than people, we're aware that a lot of these made their way through to a lot of folks. Um, you know, we would encourage people that if they think the underlying debt is, is bad, to reach out to the state agency holding the debt. You know, unfortunately, we're, we don't, like I said, we don't know the debt. So we're not able to adjudicate whether the debt is correct or not. All we know is we were told you owed the debt and we've done the offset. Once you clear that debt up with that underlying ag agency, whoever that is, you'll then be able to get the refund from them because at that point they they have the money in their in their pocket. Okay, thanks, Matt. Um, and the, the next thing I want to talk about, uh, moving over to a different tax, um, the commercial activity tax. Yeah. Um, you know, we had, you know, advocated, you know, this as the budget bill, Hospital 33 went over to the Senate, you know, there, there wasn't really any cat discussions in the House. Um, they, uh, the Senate talked about doing a 25% across the board uh, rate cut, taking the, the rate from 0.26 to 0.195. Um, we, along with some other business uh, business groups, advocated for a different approach. Instead, uh, you know, going from the exemption amounts, uh, increasing those up, um, which you know ultimately eliminated the annual minimum tax. In you know this this filing, you know, we're two days away from May 10th right now. The uh, the last annual filing that will ever uh, take place. Um, and, and so, can can you kind of tell us a little bit about the process? Uh, that, that the taxpayers for this year, you know, the exemption is three million uh, in gross receipts and under, and then in 2025 it'll be six, it'll double to six million and under. Uh, kind of the process on the cat and and what they need to do, you know, if you're an annual filer in the, in the last two days here. Sure, Greg, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. Cat is not a specialty of mine, but but I I did want to be prepared to talk about this because I know it, it the deadline is looming. I um, you know, the first thing that's important is, as Greg said, that the deadline is on Friday. Um, for a lot of people, this is going to be this is going to be the last one. You know, if you're under three million, um, you're not going to see another one of these. So um, I'm sure you all shed a tear about that. But, uh, you know, just the same. Make sure that you file this one. We have had some taxpayers confused uh, by our messaging, believing that that they're already not needing to file. Um, this is for your last year. So you do need to file this year. Um, and this will kind of be the end of it. The other important thing to remember is if you're going to stay under 3 million and then ultimately 6 million in gross receipts this year, and then in 2025, 6 million, that you need to cancel your CAT account. This will avoid you getting notices from us, getting DQ'd from us. You know, the idea being if you filed with us every year, we don't know what your gross receipts are. And so as long as that account is active, we're going to assume that you need to be filing with us. So we're going to estimate and we're going to send that out to you. Ultimately, it can get cleared up, but to avoid getting those notices, to avoid that confusion, we recommend that you go in, you cancel your account. Obviously, if you were to ever get over the 3 million or the 6 million threshold later, you would need to reopen that CAT account, but, but definitely make sure for those of you that know you're going to be under or for your clients who you know are going to be under, getting that account cat account canceled is going to help out just immensely with us administering the tax and with you guys not getting notices that you just you just don't want or don't need. Yeah, thanks Matt. And the, I mean the one the one thing we we we've really been trying to stress this because the the annual filers, you know, the reason why it's called annual is cuz it's one time a year. If, if they do not cancel that account there, there is only going to be quarterly filings after that. And so the, these annual filers are clearly under uh, or historically have been under that $3 million threshold. And so they're going to roll over to a quarterly filer if they don't cancel the account. And they're going to have to file four, you know, quarter, you know, four quarterly zero returns. And we don't want anybody to have to do that. And so, you know, if somebody were to miss this May 10th deadline, you know, there may be penalties and interest associated with it on the back end, but you still 
right, Matt, you still want to cancel that account, even if you miss the May 10th deadline, just because, you know, the department's then going to start looking for quarterly filings from that taxpayer. That's right, Greg. And and it's just, like I said, it's just so important, like from an administrative standpoint, and just so that you don't get caught up in something that you don't need to be caught up in, or you don't get transferred to a filing status that the client doesn't belong in to make sure that they, that that's taken care of. Um, and it's also something, you know, you can, you can do that pretty much right when you file. You can already have done it, but but just make sure you get that done as soon as possible. Matt, going back to the, the there's a uh, comment in the chat there um, about the refund offset letters. Um, maybe we'll give you a chance to, to look at what was said there, but it was more kind of like the department is sending the letters out. And so I think that's, I think what our member is saying is like, that's why a lot of the calls are coming into the department. Uh, but, you know, since you don't know what the debt is, I guess what kind of, I guess what would you suggest um, to to members on how, how to handle that? So, yeah, so I'm, and I apologize because I'm trying to jump back and forth between looking at the chat and the Q and A. Um, but but I mean, so we do, we, I will say we put as much information as we have on those letters. And in fact, we've had some taxpayers and practitioners say we give too much information and then it kind of bogs down the message. So we're actually looking at ways to simplify that notice, that offset notice. They absolutely do come from us because you're expecting a refund from us. And so we feel obligated to say to you, you're not going to get that refund that you're anticipating. You know, ultimately, if we don't send a notice like this, what we're going to get is a phone call saying, where's my refund? And so we we proactively send this letter. We do include the information that we have. Um, my recommendation is we put the number of the agency that holds the debt. We put the amount we offset to that agency. Uh, you need to call that agency. You know, that agency is going to be in the best position to know why there's a debt. Um, in particular, if it's the Ohio Attorney General's office, they collect for a lot of state agencies. And all we get from them is that a debt is owed. We don't know whether it's to OG, ODJFS. We don't know whether it's to, to a university. We don't know if it's for parking tickets. We have no way of knowing that. Um, you know, it's definitely, uh, we understand the frustration, we understand the confusion, we understand that the notice is coming from us. And so the first instinct is, well, I'll call the place that sent the notice. We would just caution that, and we tried to, uh, we've tried to make our our, our, our phone system kind of uh, uh, alleviate that concern. Like we actually say, if you, if you call us, we say, we can't help you with this. And we give you a way to push a button and transfer yourself to the attorney general's office or to one of the other state agencies so that they can help you with it. That's helped a lot, but but we do put what we can on there. Um, I do think that there are some concerns in terms of privacy and in terms of of disclosure, why why we don't get more information about it. Um, you know, the way the statutes seem to be written, it's really just they need to tell us that there's a debt. If there's a debt, we need to offset to it, and and that's that's the way that it's set up right now. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, there's a there's a couple of questions about the cat in in the Q and A. Um, I mean, this might be also a good segue because you know Matt Matt and I only have about fifteen to twenty minutes today. Um, the department is actually doing a virtual tax academy next week, and uh, cat is one of the three topics that are on the agenda, I believe. Matt, if you want to kind of if you want to address the questions, yeah. or if you want to talk about uh, what the OVTA is going to cover next week on May fifteenth. Yeah, so I would normally, like if this was a question on something that I was an expert on, I would be happy to answer your guys' question. Unfortunately, CAT is not one of my my specialties, but luckily we do have a two-day webinar set of webinars happening next week, May 15th and 16th. It's six one-hour sessions spread over two days. Both are held virtually. Um, the May 15th offers three hours of CPE credit or CLE if any of you guys are attorneys. Um, and the content's more geared towards practitioners. Uh, the topics are going to include um, Ohio's past serenity taxes, including the uh, IT4738, which is our salt cap workaround tax. Um, it's also going to have a session on how to respond to department notices. So what to do if you get a department notice, what are the best practices, what are the response deadlines, how can you make sure not to get caught in any kind of issues or, or miss deadlines, things like that. And then the last session that we're going to have on May 15th is recent updates to the CAT and, and some things related to the municipal net profits tax. Um, I would highly recommend signing up for those. Um, they'll be able to answer all of those questions and, and better know, you know about the difference between suspending or, or, or canceling the account and then some of the, the questions that I do see in the chat. 
The May 16th uh, session that we have is actually more geared towards small business owners or new business owners. Um, there's no CPE credit offered at that. Again, we're, we're not gearing toward the practitioners, but more the owners themselves. Um, the topics of that will include an overview of the sales and use tax, an overview of Ohio's employer withholding tax, and then again, some recent updates to the CAT and how to best respond to notices from a, from a business owner or an individual perspective. Um, you know, we would, again, we'd encourage anybody on this call that wants some free CPE credit to sign up for the May 15th and to let your, your clients know about the May 16th, if they want to attend and see kind of what's going on. I appreciate Greg. It looks like you put a link to that in the chat. It's also, if you just go to tax.ohio.gov, there's a banner story with it on our main page. You can click on the link and go to the portal to register. Um, but we're hoping for a lot of good questions and a, and a good turnout for that. Yeah, and Matt, we got to wrap up here. I did put the link to that. Um, the, the department also has a great FAQ uh, page on the CAT. So once I go screen down here, I will find that on their website. I'll also put a link to that. It answers a lot of these CAT questions. Um, you know, I, I think we'll get to some of the other questions uh, potentially at the end. I, I, I will just say real quick, the, you know, eliminating Ohio's, you know, state income tax is 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 going to be a Herculean effort. Um, and it's only on non-business income, the proposals that are out there right now. But it represents uh, about $8 billion. It would take $8 billion out of Ohio's budget. And so we do our budget bills on a two-year basis. Um, and it, it, the two-year budget bill is about $88 billion. Um, and so 44 billion per year. So, I mean, that that 8 billion is, is gonna be a huge chunk. I think what you're gonna see more of is heading towards a flat tax. You know, there's only two rates out there currently. The one they're heading towards is 2.75. Um, and then on muni tax, I mean, yes, we're, we're always looking at uh, making, uh, you know, reforms in that area. But um, if we have some extra time at the end, maybe we can address some of these other questions. But Matt, I, I really appreciate you coming on here today. And I know, I know it was a lot of quick hitters but we covered a lot of, a lot of stuff and I appreciate your time. Um, if, did you have anything you wanted to uh, conclude with? Just really, uh, really appreciate the opportunity to come in and talk to you guys today and uh, look forward to opportunities in the future. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Matt. Th thanks everyone.